Hello and welcome to another episode. In the last video, there was a bonus question about async tasks. How many threads are in an async task? And most of you were right. There's two threads that run in an async task. On pre-execute runs on the UI thread. It runs something before you execute the async task. The actual execution do in background runs on the worker thread, which is the background thread. And then post execute goes back to the main thread, the UI thread. So two. Good job. You get the pleasure of knowing you were right. All right. For this video, there's some more questions. Question number one, which of the following is a reserved keyword that when used can refer to the functionality of another class? So a reserved keyword is a word that you cannot use in your code to refer to anything but the original intent of the word. It's reserved by the language. I probably wouldn't guess this because I had to try it. I don't have them memorized and I never asked myself this question. The choices are package, extend, import and protected. The answer is actually not import. Because you can instantiate variables of these names, but you cannot use the word package. Package is the right answer. Interesting question. Question number two. How do you communicate between two fragments? I usually define an interface. And that's what the answer is. You define an interface. You define it in fragment A. You implement it in fragment B. The call goes out from fragment A, B is notified, etc. Now another answer here is a shared view model. And this answer is defined even in the Android documentation about this question. But I don't think they're looking for the shared view model answer. Because what if you're not using MVVM? What if there are no view models? Android docs are assuming that you're using MVVM. The normal solution would be, and the typical very simple solution would be just to implement an interface between them and that's how you get them to communicate. This is a nice one. In Kotlin, what is the difference between const and val? So both of them are used to define values that do not change or cannot change. But the difference is that const is used to initialize this value that does not change at compile time. At compile time, before running the code, you have to know the value of this field. With val, you can just say val age is equal to 5. Or val age, and then you have an if statement, and you assign the age inside that. So it needs to run to be able to initialize that variable. Const needs to be known while you compile. It cannot be up to some if or something. So that's the difference between them. Const is for compile time initialization. Val is for runtime initialization. Does Kotlin only work for the JVM? No, it works for JavaScript, native, JVM. There's massive effort on Kotlin multi-platform going on right now. Answer is no. Why would you declare a class as abstract? Why would you? When it doesn't make much sense to have an instance of that class, you don't want it to be used in an object. You just want it to be a place where you've defined some basic structure and you have some supported behavior which you want the other classes to take over from your class. But you don't want anybody to say uh, new my class dot anything. It doesn't make sense. It works. It, it will compile but there is no use for it. So you just make it abstract. This one's cool. This one's tough. In Android, bitmaps take up large amounts of memory. That's true. What is the correct way to deal with this issue? Well, as per the Android documentation, you should read the dimensions of the bitmap before you decode it. And they provide that with the in just decode bounds property. That property, if you set it to true and then you attempt to decode the bitmap, this will result in returning null for the bitmap object, but at the same time, you're gonna get the width, the height, and the mime type of that bitmap so that you could act accordingly when you know them. This allows you to read it before you attempt to decode it and run into a crash or an out of memory error. Here's how the code looks like. It's just a property that you apply on the options bitmap factory. You get the height, width, and mime type. And I'm supposing here you read it I mean, you decode it according to those measurements. You resize. This technique allows you to read the dimensions and type of the image 
prior to construction and memory allocation of the bitmap? It's a pretty interesting question. I had no idea. Next bonus question. Which of the following is the best way to update a screen periodically? Choices are Alarm Manager, Background Service, Notification Manager, Thread and Handler. If you know the answer to this question, good for you. Put it in the comments. If you don't, stick around to the next episode, you'll find out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.